So thank you, Katia, for your kind presentation. I think it's quite uh, interesting in Germany to say that uh, I met not Gotham Gosch, but his work first uh, in a jury for Show Solitude Stuttgart, and I really went through this. Uh, the file and I found the, both the file and the book extremely intriguing and, uh, and interesting and uh, I thought that it would be a, a good uh, idea to have uh, Gotham in, uh, in Stuttgart. Stuttgart where uh, we, we or they had uh, many many um, people uh, applying from uh, India after the brilliant passage of a K1 Meta more than 15 years ago with a very uh, important and interesting architect and uh, cultural critic. So I'm very happy that uh, it went on and <laughs> you are, they are still waiting for you in solitude. <laughs> you will have to go. If not, I will have some trouble. And uh, I'm uh, really happy to, to be here because it's the first time I see so many works in real because I went through many files. We had a uh, few works in uh, Pompidou. Uh, and uh, I would like to begin uh, asking you to uh, not to explain, I don't think there is much to explain, but this reptiles title, which is a reduced title out of the one you used in, uh, in Oslo uh, months ago for your show. And uh, how does it uh, sound, how does it work with your works? Yeah, I think yeah, mm, uh, what you just mentioned uh, about, you know, it is a much reduced title uh, compared to my last exhibition. And uh, also, you know, like, uh, I think it's uh, important that, you know, important that uh, since, you know, I, I'm choosing to work from 2015, 2016, 17, like several years. And uh, so combine uh, all of the work together and also, you know, at a time not to saturate the title and make the elongated one. I think it would be nice to spot it out somewhere and it was, it was definitely a, a difficult and, of course, challenging uh, task uh, to put a point. And um, somehow I come down to reptiles. Uh, it's kind of a state of being, I think, reptiles. St st state of being uh, in, be in between e evolutionary phase, where you can stand up, you know, when you can have the four legs or two legs. Uh, kind of animation situation. Also, uh, reptiles is a kind of a kind of a, uh, is much more horizontal than the vertical. And this being very much into the soil, uh, this uh, vertical, you know, and close to somehow soil, I would say. And I, I found a kind of a comfortable to being reptile uh, in this exhibition. And uh, yeah, maybe something like that. And so reptile would take us to another dimension of your work, which is, if not originating, very are rooted, very inspired by a very specific uh, landscape, which is the desert, and these days is very close to uh, Gujarat, even so, because you had the desert in Shantini Gaitan. We should have said on the beginning, um, and I say it now, that uh, Gautam is living now in Shantini Gaitan, which is a very holy place of Indian modernism, like Bengal, which has been really the engine of the uh, Indian modern, and that in the past, let's say in the, up till the very beginning of the 20th century, you had a much more desertic landscape around that you could see uh, in the uh, paintings by major Indian artists like uh, Benoît de Bari Mukherjee and many uh, artists from the Bengal school, and now it's a little bit less desertic. So the one you are working now, you are working on and you are interested in is more uh, closer to uh, Gujarat. But this said, uh, we could enter in another dimension of your work because there are some reasons for, for you to be so uh, attentive, so uh, inspired by this very specific, again, landscape, by this very specific, uh, you spoke about neutrality before, and we prefer the word uh, quietness of desert, and maybe it could take us to this uh, very um, deep, but also a very quiet, not noisy, uh, interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, and interdisciplinary dimension of your work. Could you elaborate a little bit? Yeah, I think uh, something uh, landscape that also uh, in the beginning of our con conversation uh, uh, with Katya that uh, landscape uh, like uh, for the space I am from, uh, 
I think we all have kind of, you know, you start with landscape painting and then, you know, I had a kind of a background with the geography study. And, uh, and from there, I think, you know, this, uh, you, while you're studying geography, you know, and this, uh, this, uh, all this notion, you know, different, uh, you get to know different kind of uh, formation of the rocks. Uh, so it's kind of a uh, space that also takes you back, you know, back in the sense, uh, like a uh, beginning of the world, let's say, you know, and this, uh, all these uh, tectonic movements shifting the place, uh, our nation is coming up, and uh, then uh, this uh, beginning of life form, you know, then of course uh, this free access zone and uh, all, the, all the reptiles, of course, and so on, uh, all the developed uh, much more uh, uh, animals and humans later on. So uh, I think uh, this kind of, uh, where I am having this project uh, now, this western part of India is a kind of a salted barren land, and uh, geologically this is quite a uh, quite a uh, 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 is the geological presence uh, uh, in that site is uh, uh, is very much visible because uh, this uh, earthquake is kind of a phenomena uh, in that place. So many times uh, earthquake happened since like uh, like 5,000 years, you know, is happening back to back. So this place has gone through tremendous changes last, last 5,000 years. Many civilizations came and they wipe, wiped out, you know. Th there has this many more uh, archaeological site. And uh, we have this archaeological site that is a, we say that is a first uh, human being, you know, first human civilization took place, that is Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. Uh, it's similar to, with, uh, with the Sumatra and Zabha, other, and the Mesopotamia at the same time. And uh, yeah, it's something that, you know, it's nowadays it's a salted barren land abandoned with a kind of a archaeological site. And, you know, it's like, you know, since it is an open space, you know, uh, nothing exactly uh, you find, you know, like no big structure since it is a desert. And it really helps you to imagine something and uh, necessarily, you know, you go back to the past and, uh, you know, imagine all these events. And uh, yeah, I think something that, you know, free access zone where, you know, and it's also uh, kind of a share a boundary with Pakistan, our uh, uh, neighbor country. And it's a huge border fence and somehow, you know, it's impossible to, you know, go other side. And people live there as a relative to the other side, you know, they can't go. So I think, you know, m coming to this, you know, this kind of free access zone and uh, kind of go going, went back to the face you know, and when these uh, reptiles used to be no human, I, I don't know, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think, and I think we should uh, uh, precise for, for people that uh, Mohenjo Daro and Arapa are now in Pakistan. Yeah. When it was supposed to be, and it's still very used by the nationalist Indian, but it's, uh, it's unfortunately in Pakistan now. So this is one, uh, one, uh, one aspect. What, uh, what I find extremely, uh, in what you were uh, commenting, of course we have a certain number of elements which are a close to directly coming from the desert, which, I, which have nothing to do with an anecdote, it has nothing to do with a, a specific uh, people, it has more to do with the materiality, a certain kind of uh, colors you are using, the pigments you are using, the way you are working, so this is the materiality, <laughs> material aspect of it, but also this uh, quietness of the desert, this uh, necessary distanciation that you have to, you are very conscious about what happened, you're also very conscious about what it is now, and uh, probably um, we could now enter in um, the uh, multiple dimensions of your, your, of your work, which is very far from being, uh, again, it's not representative, even less anecdotal, but it's really full of not necessarily references on the proper meaning of the word, but more dealing with very different um, sensibilities, very different um, species of the mind, very different uh, depths, which if we wanted to begin being a little bit uh, square, the spiritual dimension, the rational dimension, which can be the dimension of the mathematics, which can be the dimension of the archaeology, which can be the dimension of the geolo geological knowledge, of the, the land, of the place, and how you articulate in your works, which again are very far from any representation. 
Yeah, like since you, you mentioned so many different disciplines, and uh, uh, I would say this is a kind of a mass form of knowledge, you know, before we come to this uh, like different discipline or specialized field of knowledge that uh, archaeology, geology, or mathematics. And uh, I think this is a unique opportunity being an artist also, you know, like you can really uh, give, a, give a really try and, uh, and work as a really uh, in, in interdisciplinary manner, you know, not to going to the lab or somewhere else. Also, you know, your studio can be, you know, and your imagination itself a lab somehow. So I, I, I always try to take this liberty because, you know, it's many, many, many difficulties when it's, if you go to the other discipline and ask for a, can I, you know, access your lab or, you know, kind of knowledge. There's many uh, obstacles I found also. So somehow, you know, uh, so being, I had to allow myself being creative, you know, and uh, inside studio, I, I trying to, you know, like access this knowledge uh, within my capacity, you know. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, uh, it's impossible to, uh, impossible to separate them, you know, and it's beautiful when you don't separate them actually, because uh, it doesn't contradict you know, when uh, you travel from little bit, you know, measurement uh, and the number and then this, this rock and the soil, you know. So a uh, bit of, you know, mathematics and a bit of uh, uh, geometry, a bit of biology, you just get involved with it. Very, very, very true nature of knowledge, I guess, you know. So I think I would like to celebrate and entire this transdisciplinary or uh, interdisciplinary things quite quietly, exactly, because uh, uh, because uh, I don't know if it be insecure also while I'm talking about all these things. And um, yeah, so I, yeah, something like that. No, I'm, mention I'm mentioning that because in a certain number of uh, uh, texts which were produced not on your work, it's very interesting that you are working a lot with texts produced by people who are very knowledgeable in their own field, people you are working with, in discussion with, collaborating with, whether they are anthropologists, whether they are a more... A, uh, involved in spiritualities like uh, Tantra, which is a very, very specific uh, uh, spiritual um, and physical uh, practice. Uh, and uh, you, you also are in an interview which is more like in French, I would say, conversation, uh, which was published in um, Kunstkritik, where you are very generous of your, uh, not your sources, because again, there is nothing manifest, there is nothing explicit in your work, but you are very generous in the, uh, let's say, uh, evoking, mentioning the different fields you are um, dealing with, you are digging in sometimes, and how you uh, articulate in your work. And maybe uh, the, um, what is uh, the first element for people who don't know you, who don't know your work, and when you come to the, um, uh, the works you see here is a very uh, specific materiality, which you know you have to come closer. And uh, would you elaborate on, on that? Because it's a very um, uh, complex in the, the different elements you are using. When you look from very, very carefully, it's uh, extremely, um, I won't say sophisticated, but a very complex. Um, collection of gestures, uh, pigments, the way you, the, the, the many layers, and uh, before I, I test, because I don't like to go with a, a word uh, an artist is not um, familiar with, or which would seem to him completely out of the spot, and it seems to me that there is a palimpsestic dimension in your work, which has to do with a cultural palimpsest, which has to do with a uh, material palimpsest. And after we'll go later to possible uh, memories of very, very um, different memories, which are not all from the archaeology, but which might be some memories from the very uh, the depths of Indian modern. Problem is that people don't know well Indian modern outside from India, but nevertheless, there is a very, very uh, powerful one. So, would you could you elaborate on the the materiality of your works? Are you yeah, materiality is something I think uh, is very personal also. Uh, I'm feeling a bit, uh, I don't know <laughs> whether, uh, uh, what extent I would like to talk about it. Since uh, it's a bit uh, personal things and uh, I don't know it's also legitimate, uh, I don't know how it is important to talk about it. But uh, I, know, uh, I know why it is important also to talk uh, 
in terms of you know to build build it up and uh, uh, yeah uh, like in terms of I make my own color you know and it's like <laughs> I make my own colors and uh, yeah then it's you know then uh, you have an open option to you know make a, how you can make your color best you know like that and you add many things you know so uh, kind of a, you made a kind of a lab situation within your studio. And uh, yeah, I think I, I took this liberty to make my own pigments, and uh, which is uh, which is I enjoy throughout. And uh, do I feel myself like an alchemist? No, I don't think so. But yeah, exactly, I try to imitate also. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and uh, I think with the also kind of surface, I come up with this this blackboard with the chalk things also, and something with something uh, like you know like uh, initial learning in the school learning you know when we have this blackboard and this chalkboard things yeah i could imagine many more things should uh, should uh, also done should have been done also without not only letters you know so also this i like this geometry making on this blackboard somehow and uh, yeah so combination of both i think and keep them things together the form and geometry at a time and struggling to keep them uh, keep them in a one surface because they have their own temperament and uh, uh, energy. So need to need to negotiate and keep them together and see them as a you know, like a kind of a united form or you know, unifying form, something like that. So yeah. It's interesting that you're adding in the uh, dimension of the um, uh, when you at school, you know the. the the blackboard, but you know, you have also many dimensions and when you look carefully at the works, you have certain moments when you have uh, what is uh, inside, outside, what is on top, what is under, and sometimes what is under is coming on top, and it's a very, very uh, subtle uh, uh, organization, and also the, the fact that very often you are a painting on canvas, and the canvas is on paper, sometimes it's the opposite, and of course it's, you can't uh, avoid uh, to think about very uh, traditional, very specific ways of uh, using uh, certain uh, mediums, certain surfaces uh, in very specific uh, cultural processes and moments. And again, the blackboard is one other level and probably uh, disturbing a little bit what could have been a citational, a citation of other uh, very historicized, historicized uh, uh, supports so this is one thing and but you know when it when you come to say okay it has to be organized and I'm, I'm, it's clear that there is a moment you have to find uh, something and only for harmony but uh, kind of stability to the uh, image uh, even so the image is very often more of a palimpsest than a really a stabilized and fixed and definitive image but this said and uh, I think it's something which is uh, important because it's opening. We are now moving from the materiality of the works to the another kind of uh, intentionality, which is more in terms of cultural politics, which has to do with uh, what I um, would um, define as an attempt to delay. In French, I would say différé, but I don't know how to say well différé in English, so I will use a more... No, not differentiate, differe, derida, differe, on arrive, uh, differe, differe, differe. So let's say delay, and so an attempt to delay uh, the interpretation. That there is never uh, in your work a possibility of a definitive, it's very difficult anyway, but there is this kind of, uh, it's like escaping. You look and you look and you look, and there is really this. Um, notion that interpretation is never there. It's escaping. It's, and, I think, and it seems to me that this uh, delayed uh, process of interpretation, the delay of the possibility of an interpretation is um, resonating in a very special way in uh, India today, probably in many other parts of the world, but very precisely in India today. Yeah, I think uh, this is a purely strategy, I would say, uh, a purely strategy uh, because, uh, yeah, because of the comfort also and, uh, and possible threats also, you know, like, you know, how much you're going to expose, how much you're going to uh, inwards, you know, how much you can delay 
and that is you you uh, adopt uh, the you know you the situation you are you know surrounded by and uh, and that's that's the way you you know and uh, you don't know like uh, this delay can be for 10 years delay can be for 5 years you know and i think it has also has a moment also come out i hope so you know and uh, but yeah uh, I, I i like that when you said these things i uh, i just realized today when you talking about these things and uh, yeah uh, yeah, because uh, when I said this is a strategy, strategy in terms of, you know, like putting into a different layers together, you know, and the uh, layers, and when we have the multi-layers, it get, uh, the construction of the things get more strong, you know. It's not going to be, it's not going to be durable so easily. So this multi-layer strategy and also, you know, kind of a forbiddenness, you know, though an appearance you don't see anything, also maybe, you know, then, you know. And this color does not lie, you know, there's the things, you know, I attempt many, several attempts over layer on layer, you know, and like wiping them out. But what magic happened, you know, like, you know, I think when you layer the, put the five layers, you know, with five different time, five different, you know, like kind of a, uh, uh, energies or uh, momentum, and they speak together, you know, although you, you uh, rub them, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, kind of a, uh, merge them, but still they they present, so uh, that's what I feel, you know. So standing on that, you know, and uh, yeah, I think uh, something, uh, yeah, I would say uh, about this uh, strategy and uh, delay. Yeah, which is, of course, very <laughs> different. Uh, <laughs> but again, and it was quite important for me that we we uh, insist on that because it's uh, it's a critical strategy, which is very different uh, from uh, any uh, immediacy and um, nothing to do with certain uh, contemporary strategies where it seems to me that uh, the uh, critical act is just aestheticizing and adding one more level of efficiency to the media uh, speed or to the, uh, the mainstream images speed. And I think in your work it's a very, very different uh, perspective. I think it's uh, probably possible in a, in a culture like uh, Indian culture, which is extremely um, heterogeneous. And again, it's quite important to insist on that in a moment where, not you, but uh, unfortunately not just people like you in India at the moment, and uh, where you have this kind of uh, tendency to, uh, more than a tendency, the essentialization of Indian culture as a Hindu essence plus an Hinduism, which is uh, very, very uh, simplified and to a certain extent invented. So it seems to me that your, uh, your strategy is uh, in a way echoing other ones from other artists. And uh, it seems to me that the way you are, again, uh, dealing with these very different levels of uh, uh, knowledge, uh, apprehension, articulations, whether it's uh, spirituality, whether it's more rational, like uh, mathematics, and even more precisely arithmetics, whether it's departing from a knowledge from anthropology and or archaeology, which are sometimes very connected. I think it's really uh, ending in a very um, palimpsestic, again, image, which is extremely um, singular. After that, when we discussed before, and I want elaborate too much on that because I'm very conscious that these major artists from India are unfortunately not well known in all <laughs> part of the world and I think that your, your work is absolutely uh, it has nothing to do in terms of iconography, it has nothing to do formally but it's for me culturally reasoning with works and I will mention three names and after those who know Wonderful. Those who don't know, you just go, you Google, and you will see a few. I think it's uh, it's uh, for me echoing to uh, works by uh, Ganesh Pine. Uh, on another level, Gaitonde, the, the materiality of the abstraction, and so on and so forth. So it seems to me that it's uh, not at all um, a work which is uh, completely lost in India, except that it's a works which is extremely. Um, connected again with the tradition without going through uh, anecdote, without going through um, folk 
identification. Of course, there are some folk elements in your work, but it's, there is nothing like uh, folklorization. There is nothing like um, self um, ethno specificity and, and so on and so forth. And I think it's a very, it seems to me, very singular and connecting you with the uh, really the, the most uh, demanding of uh, Indian modern. I think what is uh, uh, what is important that you know uh, I can choose to uh, the time to leave what time I wants to leave and uh, and uh, so uh, the so possibility is not only for future also um, I don't know not even uh, I would not say the future or past in this you know direct uh, linear things the possibility is you know it's uh, enormous it can be back and forth ups and down you know so. Uh, and uh, you can br bring your, uh, draw your line, uh, time of line you wants to leave anywhere. I think uh, this, our time most of the time uh, uh, determined by the technological development and, uh, and most of the technological development is coming from a profit making industry. I, I have nothing to do with that but the still you know I think uh, being an artist I have a full choice to live uh, time I wants to, I wants to leave. And uh, yeah, if I have something f uh, from my past, you know, I can go back there, you know, um, uh, dig something and come back. So exactly what, what you saying this, you know, uh, this uh, cultural uh, time and the cultural richness, in inevitably, you know, I have this immediate, uh, this uh, uh, country I'm from, you know, it's mu multilinguistic, multicultural setup, which is really amazing and because uh, it does not does not uh, does not uh, convey for uh, any homogenetic ideas. You know, it's more scattered and uh, more diverse. And uh, yeah, it's, it's quite uh, I think quite uh, has a material to drive in, and that is you know exactly again this uh, kind of uh, uh, from the religious idea. You know, because uh, more and more we go back, we of course we have to encounter this religious institution, and. Uh, Good and bad, you know. There are many uh, good things also uh, uh, can be can be absorbed. And this again, you know, uh, when the knowledge was used to be in the religious domain, they used to practice, you know, at a time, you know, the medical and this uh, uh, astrology and this uh, kind of uh, physiology and this uh, mathematics and all. So I just took a little trip around it, you know, and uh, this. Uh, Somehow I get to know a little bit more about, you know, get uh, attracted with the mathematics in some reason. And maybe the reason was uh, to generate uh, to generate kind of a uh, logic because uh, mathematics and philosophy has a common ground. That is a, a logic, I think, you know, both deriving from this, you know, this logical ground. And mathematics, I was so bad in mathematics, I'm still. But the thing is, you know, that is, that is, again, you know, I found that this, you know, moment I realized this mathematics and philosophy has a basic ground that is logic. Okay, can I logic, apply this logic somehow that can I generate to understand little bit mathematics, not exactly mathematics, so I'm trying to be creative again and escape. And uh, so then uh, I found later on that this, uh, what, is, what is that uh, initial phase, that amateur form of mathematics, what is, makes me more fascinated. Amateur fam form of mathematics uh, has a kind of a, it's not really mathematics, but you know, this kind of arithmetic, I would say, much more uh, narrative and appreciating the essence of uh, things, uh, very much uh, to do with the religious ideas. So kind of I'm just, you know, uh, driving a little bit uh, my own way in the arithmetic areas, you know, amateur uh, part of the mathematics and uh, and of course, it's a uh, form and its own logic and its geometry, you know, and this uh, essence of a form, you know, particular materiality and the essence of it, you know, how, how we can value the essence, you know, what kind of measurement we'll apply, what scale we have to measurement the essence. So that is, that is very important that uh, which scale we have to measurement anything. Of course, we have one, two, three, four, but one, two, three, four, just a kind of a abstract uh, construction in between infinite space between one and two. And this again come to do how we measure. Measurement is something that uh, I find uh, really fascinating and we can, we can multiple ways we can, we can uh, apply those things and uh, reassess our uh, situation and the materiality, yeah. I think it's, it's, uh, it's uh, bringing back this, uh, not only the, the fact that uh, Indian culture, especially the modern moment has been so porous, uh, more than in uh, many other countries or, uh, 
geocultural zones, very uh, porous to the vernacular, to the uh, heterogeneity of practices, to um, even uh, popular expressions, that it's very difficult to, um, to separate, to um, identify the, 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 when you would ask an uh, in Indian uh, person educated high culture, it would be really uh, they don't know. He won't. <laughs> he won't answer easily. But what you said, no, this measurement. It's also something which is so uh, deeply uh, embedded into uh, the uh, major aesthetic uh, notion of uh, one of the major aesthetic notions of in, in India, which is the raza, and raza, which is a measurement, which is a quality, uh, a material quality, um, and also an ethical quality. And it's always connected which is uh, absolutely uh, infusing uh, many, many judgments or many, many uh, um, procedures in, uh, in modern India, whether people want to accept it or not. So again, the point is not to, um, to folklorize, it's more the opposite, you know, to be able to deal a little bit with music. You know, I think uh, uh, raga is not an, uh, a traditional music, it's a living tradition, living music, and it's uh, when you would discuss with um, musicologists who know very well the old uh, history of uh, music in India, they would explain that, and much better than me, <laughs> that it's, uh, it's um, repeating because it's uh, permanently transforming. Or you repeat for transforming permanently. It's close to a very Deleuzean idea. And uh, so I think that the, the point is um, how, how does it work, how does it... Um, function in a work which, again, is absolutely not a anecdotal, representative, and there is nothing, no attempt to, to figure, to describe. It's much more um, complex than that. And I think for me it's really corresponding to a very uh, specific, complex uh, moment. In India and outside from India, I think it's uh, corresponding to a very uh, complex um, a moment, and again, when people would look at the works, there is this kind of uh, um, openness. It's not something you can uh, identify immediately. It's not something you can categorize. You can read. You can. Uh, it's like um, when you would have, you know, the things you put under the light, and you have different uh, reflections depending on your knowledge, depending on what you are expecting, depending on what you are. Um, uh, used to or not used to look at, but it's absolutely not a, a work which is in any way something that you could at least assimilate to any um, um, advertising or any uh, <coughs> simplifying element. And I think that it's again not uh, completely a coincidence for me <laughs> that it's coming out of uh, India. At the moment, if you have to understand the moment as um, the moment we are in, the moment you, you are living in. You mean that the moment is a global moment also? Yeah. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, let go. I don't know, like, uh, uh, the, the fact is, you know, like, uh, uh, this again, I'll, I'll uh, come back to the practice again, you know, like, uh, how, how, how rigorously you can do practice, you know, and uh, associate other things, uh, and this, uh, this abs form of the abstraction also somehow, what you said, you know, this, uh, this is, uh, you know, keep shifting these things and kind of, you know, also I think it's a very much a nature of things that, you know, it does not appear as it is all the time, you know, kind of it has its own strategy again, you know, you know, uh, so uh, I think this uh, kind of uh, form you acquire also and uh, then you treat the form, you work with the form for a long time, even, even with the musician also, you know. Uh, they make it, uh, they, they work on it and make it more simple and more it gets simple, it gets more complicated some way, you know. And this complication where you really don't uh, find a kind of a surface where it can, you can hold it, you know. 
it gets so smooth, smooth not in that uh, like cylindrical or round smooth, but somehow it gets so, you know, like uh, greasy that you can hold this form somehow. And that is somehow something that complication has, you know, reached that you can't really, but, you know, and then you, you uh, speculate around it or, you know, or enjoy it. I don't know what to say that, you know. That is, uh, that is my, I think, aspiration also in terms of to, to achieve anything, you know. Uh, when I work also, you know, uh, this uh, kind of a non-representational or this uh, an identical shape of it, you know. Uh, an identical shape can be anything. But uh, then any identical, any unidentical shape can be a kind of a, uh, can, be, can be considered as a form that has uh, achieved this, you know, what you say, Raja, or this, uh, this, uh, this absolute form, or is there anything like, you know, this uh, reach to a point where it can be justified as a form? So I think, uh, you know, uh, when it comes through, you know, it's a lot of negotiation and then just, you know, it appears, it works. You see, this, this is working somehow. It works, you know, it's communicating. And you don't know the logic of it, you know, why it is communicating, what is special that is, you know. What is special? What are the criteria when you reject some form? What's the criteria when you keep the some form, allowing some form to come appears? So th I think that is, uh, that is quite a um, process of it, you know, and this kind of internal dialogue, I would say. And then, of course, you apply logic to understand it. You build up certain, certain kind of methods to, you know, uh, throughout your uh, duration of practice, you build up some methods, you know, and the method you share usually, you know. In, in other words, it's, uh, you know, it could be, and it would be already uh, <laughs> interesting, a, a work with uh, many, many uh, levels, levels and many layers of idiosyncrasy, meaning you know, that uh, you have a certain uh, kind of quality, whether it's a color, whether it's a materiality, whether it's a rhythm, which is specially meaningful at a specific place for a certain group of people, but it's uh, even more complicated than that because there is a moment where you are trying to find the, the own uh, tone, the own harmony out of this uh, many, many uh, working, reworking um, of uh, certain um, signs which you are I can't if I, taking out of these uh, many different uh, levels of knowledge you, you are able to, to deal with. So this said, now I would, uh, if, you, if you agree, I would like to, uh, maybe because it's in the exhibition and for me it's like the background of the works, and it's also something you, you would accept, that you would speak about the, the film you, you, you worked on, and it, which is projected in, a, it's not the full one, right? it's a segment, mm -hmm. or for one excerpt, but it's not more segment because it has been well a cut of a larger one, so um, would you elaborate on this, uh, on this work? Because it's better if you begin and after I can mm. turn what to Yeah, I made this film uh, on 16 millimeter. I shoot this film uh, and uh, yeah, I had to be a little brave to do these things because uh, it's already a kind of a you know, medium I used to use in past. And but uh, yeah, I with 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 my own agenda, you know, I need to do few things. I, I need to f uh, give a try and sort out few things, and I have to do that. So uh, and uh, like coming from a like painting and the drawing and uh, pick up this camera and uh, you know it's of course a different material, medium, and and it's a different opportunity uh, to pursue. And uh, and since you know I'm not a trained as a, you know uh, like a, I didn't have the uh, training for a movie making or uh, kind of a, yes, or moving image, but then also a kind of a opportunity to, I can use it my own way. And I think everybody has that kind of opportunity, of course. And uh, so, uh, kind of, it's kind of, I try to make a kind of sculptural also, you know, because uh, in 16 millimeter film, you know, you don't have any opportunity where you can look the image. So it's kind of a one magic thing, you know, you don't know what's producing the image. And you have this range of, you know, things you establish in front of you. So from this, from you and then camera and then you have the rest of the things. So this is an uh, entire space and uh, then I start, start to, you know, moving few things. I had some ideas, I wanted to work with uh, magic, I know. Because uh, I wanted to understand the magic, so uh, I asked one magician 
I found one magician, you know, I, I was very lucky to find him also. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so asking him, you know, uh, uh, to play some magic trick. So he used to show me this magic trick, but he never allowed to me go this side of this line, because uh, he said, no, you cannot come this side, you know. I respect you as a director, but don't come, uh, don't cross this line. Then I had to stand always in front of me. So he used to do something, and I, I used to see. And so I, I was spending some time <coughs> with him, and uh, then of course, you know, I really don't want to make on magic, I'm sure, because I, I need some excuse that I, I less departure from this magic things. So I ask, I shoot only one magic sequence from entire film, which is a half an hour film, but I only, I showed a one magic scene. But my experience staying with him about the illusion, what is appear and disappear, you know, and I figured out something, you know, maybe I can now live from these things and enter into a different uh, territory. And the territory precisely, you know, uh, where exactly somewhere I deal with my painting and drawings that is, you know, kind of, the form, the appearance, and the disappearance, and the illusion. Uh, yeah, something to do with, of course, this religious and bit of uh, metaphysical ideas, you know. And uh, yeah, I was trying to do something and on and on and on. Then uh, somehow I build up something out of it. So this entire film is kind of a collage, you can see, you know. This is a montage of uh, building scene, uh, scene over scene. And then I thought it could be a nice to put some voice, but unfortunately we don't have the voice over, over here. This, but in the original film I put some voice also for extra dimension. And uh, yeah, uh, that's, that is. And could you comment on a little bit on the title of the, the film? Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, the uh, f uh, title of the film I keep para. Para is like a, it's a Hindi word. Para, but it's a, a literal translation in English. It's a Mercury, Mercury uh, as a Mercury, Mercury, Mercury. Yeah, Mercury also kind of our one of the planet. Also, this metal, liquid tactile uh, metals. So I thought maybe this uh, state of again this state of metal also being in between in a solid and the liquid. You know, <laughs> again you know this kind of uh, form of it very much and this uh, this essence of it. And uh, this silver glossy surface has come kind of a black things, you know, this sharp contrast also. So uh, I think so many things can possible to hold around this para things. That is a uh, Mercury and this, uh, so that is a kind of a title I thought about it could be good. And when you look carefully to the film, there is also um, after a while a, a situation coming out which is extremely, um, fragile and at the same time very strong, which is that you, you are always in tension between elements you identify quite fast as a children game, you know, what you would do with uh, chocolate paper or it is all the, it's clear that it's not corresponding to any tribal people from India or from any other place. It's uh, obvious that it's not corresponding to any identified ritual by any um, real anthropologist. And at the same time, there are these moments absolutely uh, indecidable that you can't really decide what it is, which are uh, obviously magical or uh, completely, uh, you don't know what it's, you see that there is something uh, happening, there is a ritual between uh, different people, you have a certain kind of gesture, you have a certain kind of rhythm. And uh, it seems to me that uh, it's, um, it has to do with a certain uh, distancing and uh, critical statement, not of anthropology as a discipline, because you know it's already that so many people are criticizing anthropology and so on and so forth, but more um, touching very delicately real uh, what certain circumstances, you know, in the desert, you know, you have this, uh, this desert is uh, with inhabited by reptiles but sometimes also inhabited or crossed by uh, tribal people, which are very uh, unsaid or not always said as it should, but part, important part of the uh, Indian uh, culture and uh, reality. Yeah, like uh, uh, this uh, 
I think this uh, where we went there is a quite a uh, old area, and there's old people live. Old people, I would say, you know, uh, old they, because they are seen, uh, they are living since long, long time, and that is kind of a uh, uh, makes me, you know, really uh, 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 like uh, being respective to towards them because they are living there long, long time, long ago, and uh, they are living in a, like a long, uh, like over generation and generation, and they are, they're never exposed to this so much to this, you know, national scene also, and uh, and they are, they are living and they are making their life out of it. But moment I went there to make a film, I'm, I'm sure I'm not going to use them in my film, no, because I don't know them equally. No, I don't know them, so I cannot make them my prop of my film. So. Uh, so I like this plot. I li like the place somehow to speak, to, uh, to speak the language I want to speak, or speak the, speak the idea I want to speak as a s space. I had to depend on the pure, their uh, like uh, natural elements, the air, muds, you know, and the water they have. And then uh, I thought, you know, it's the fiction may be a kind of a nice way to, you know, crack, you know, or also get away, get a, 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 and make this space a little bit much larger than it is now. You know, so this kind of I tried this fictional idea, and uh, I also acted in the film. So, uh, uh, the friend I was uh, traveling with, you know, they also acted in the film, and we build up in kind of a uh, f uh, over a fictional uh, plot and trying to enhance the enhance the place also. So uh, yeah. And maybe it's uh, before coming to maybe ending before the questions and the discussion with what you are doing, uh, what you are working on at the moment. Maybe <coughs> and insisting a little bit on the, the, the way you are working, always uh, uh, on your own, of course, but very, very uh, in dialogue with uh, different uh, friends who are knowledgeable in uh, spirituality, in uh, anthropology, and how do you proceed? Because it's uh, the same as with the text. Each one is writing on his own discipline and not, uh, I don't know if taking the liberty or not speaking directly about your work. It's like parallel views and uh, when you, uh, you are editing, in a way, the different knowledge, the different perspective, the different comments, you come to, a, if not a totality, you come to a picture, which is uh, extremely, um, what lived a very faithful reflection of your work. So could you uh, elaborate a little bit on the, this, uh, I don't know if it's a method, it's more a process, the way you are working, the way you would like to keep on working, in, uh, I don't know if in Shantiniketan or not far from Shantiniketan on your... Yeah, I think it's a kind of a collective consciousness and uh, I convince my friend. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and not always they're also ready to do all, all things, but you know, but it's, it takes time, you know, like more, this, this because, because it's methods again and you make your own team, you know. And uh, yeah, and uh, it's, this is a very nice way of uh, networking, you know. I always a good, good. This is kind of network you, you, uh, like we build also, you know, amongst our peers, you know, friends, you know. Uh, yeah, and kind of then you exchange, you know, ma many more things, and you know, build it up because you're living in the same time. And somehow I think you know, although we are coming from a different uh, background or dis different discipline, kind of as uh, emotional wavelength, uh, sometimes it's a match, you know. You, catch things, you know, quickly. And that's, that's when I think, like, you know, that's the time I think, you know, maybe. Yeah, so it's not so easy task to, uh, you know, uh, like convince your friend, I would say, but yeah, it's totally possible also. And I think it's interesting because it's not like, uh, it's not collective or there is nothing really uh, over framed or over, you know, and it's uh, in a way when we, maybe it's, uh, extending the thing a little bit far, but uh, it's uh, closer to Shantiniketan, uh, the beginnings, the, uh, the museum of Shantiniketan and not the museum. So a very specific way of being together, thinking together, working together, and uh, what came out is what came out, and there's a few amazing artists who uh, were able to, to move on and to after open the, the school where you studied, Baroda, <laughs> the second phase of Shantini Ketan. Uh, this said, maybe now we could, um, because I guess a few things will be uh, precise and discussed uh, in, with the questions, but would you, would you like to elaborate on what you are working on or what at the moment this project in the landscape 
I'm not uh, saying um, site specific because I let it to you, but what this project which is uh, yeah, working mm, at the moment? Yeah, uh, currently uh, we are working in a kind of a form, first formation, I think. Uh, like, uh, like I'm working with other two uh, uh, person. Uh, one is from science fiction background and other is uh, working with kind of multi-species uh, and mo much more uh, with medi new media expression. And uh, I, I think it's kind of a, it would be a nice dialogue since I work with so much uh, look like bit of traditional material, you know, and some of them is really talking about all future, you know, speculative desert. And this uh, another collaborator, Susan M. Winterling, she lives in Berlin. Uh, she works with uh, m uh, like planetary sensing uh, in uh, multi-species dialogue uh, with uh, uh, yeah, 3D animation, video installation, uh, yeah, text. So I think it's kind of a, a situation where we really don't agree with, uh, with each other because uh, you know I have my own premise area and uh, they have their own areas. But I think it would be nice to have a you know kind of a dialogue, you know. Although keeping our, you know, maintaining our own area, because I nice to, it's nice to hear uh, them when I uh, hear them, not necessarily, you know. But it's still an ongoing process, and uh, we're still in a phase of uh, experimenting. Uh, we are we are going to do an exhibition in uh, October, uh, first uh, first collaborative exhibition hour, and I don't know what extent I will able to keep these things uh, because it's going to be a bit of, you know, and. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's, I, I think it's a uh, what's uh, harm. I'm going to give it a try and uh, let's see how how it's uh, evolved or yeah, something. Yeah.